Good evening. It was a fraud on a massive scale. Jim McCormick made £50 million from selling useless machines, which he claimed detected explosives. The scam paid for a mansion in Bath and a luxury yacht, but security forces all over the world were fooled and entrusted their lives to the device. In fact, the machines were just bits of wire and electronics which cost a few pounds to produce and were sold for up to $40,000 each. Our Somerset correspondent Clinton Rogers was one of the first journalists to confront Jim McCormick and reports now on today's conviction. Iraq, where bombs kill and maim with terrifying regularity. And where Jim McCormick sold 6,000 of his magic wand detectors for up to $40,000 a time. They didn't work. This man's house was damaged in an explosion close to where the detectors were being used. His daughter and son-in-law were injured in the attack. If that device was effective, if it was working properly, then none of this would have happened. This is the Inspector General of the Interior Ministry of Iraq. He came to the Old Bailey to present evidence against Jim McCormick. And afterwards, he gave a withering condemnation of the man and his machine. I feel furious, speaking as an Iraqi citizen, when I think that this gang of Jim McCormick and the Iraqis working with him killed my people by creating a false sense of security with a useless device. Mr. Jim, who were... Investigators are in little doubt that some officials in Iraq profited handsomely and dishonestly from importing McCormick's devices. The man standing next to him defending the devices at this news conference in Baghdad in 2009 is now serving four years for corruption. In ideal conditions, you can be up to one kilometre away. It was in November of 2009 we first came across Jim McCormick. He gave his only television interview to me from his offices in Wynn Canton. Back then, he was still trying to defend the effectiveness of the detectors, based, he said, on the principle of water divining. The principle behind dowsing is not too dissimilar. because. But three years later, he was on trial at the Old Bailey in London on fraud charges. The jury heard about the extravagant claims he made for his devices, but which experts said had no scientific basis whatsoever. In fact, McCormick was inspired by this piece of kit, sold in the United States for less than $20 as a novelty golf ball finder. With a little practice and the information on this video... It even comes with its own instructional video. Jim McCormick bought 300 of these golf ball finders, simply rebranded them as bomb detectors, and then sold them for $2,000 a piece. And over time, perhaps unbelievably, his bogus detectors found customers, plenty of them, around the world. Apart from Iraq, his foreign buyers included police and security forces in Georgia, Thailand, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, China, Romania, Kenya, and closer to home in Belgium. In court, Mr McCormick said no customer had ever complained. He was 1,000% happy they worked. But the jury thought otherwise. Yet his devices continue to be used. These pictures were taken at a checkpoint in Baghdad a matter of weeks ago. Proof that people's safety and security is still being entrusted to the bogus detectors that cannot possibly work. This professor at Bristol University, who helps edit a science magazine called Skeptic, says it's immoral. I think to sell these devices and put lives at, uh, at risk, and indeed, arguably, there has been you know, a lot of death as a result of people not checking the cars, systematically uh, looking for these bombs. So I think it's immoral that you sell these things. There's no doubting McCormick made a fortune from his bogus trade. Quite apart from his country home in Somerset, with expensive car and thoroughbred horse outside, he owns a property on what's known as Millionaire's Row in Bath. 
He bought it for more than £3 million from Hollywood actor Nicolas Cage. And these are McCormick's other homes in Florida and in Cyprus. And this is his rather impressive yacht. But he may not have them for much longer. Now he's been convicted, the police will be going after them as proceeds of crime. Clinton Rogers, BBC Points West. Well, our Chief Somerset Correspondent, Clinton Rogers, has followed this story from the very beginning, and Clinton is uh, with me now. Clinton, I've got one of his early devices here as well. I mean, it's clearly a bit of useless tat. I mean, why would anyone be taken in, do you think? A good question, and, and it may not surprise you to know that when that was x-rayed, they found nothing inside it. When another one was pulled apart, it's empty. There's nothing in it. In answer to your question, it's we now know that the Iraqi business was oiled by bribery. The BBC now understands that there are four former government officials and military advisers that are in prison for corruption. As for the other countries, 30 plus around the world who bought into it, you know, who knows? how they were fooled or why they were fooled. But of course, because there were so many countries around the world, it made it a very hard investigation for Avon and Somerset Police. It has not been easy, but Avon and Somerset Police, working with the Crown Prosecution Service and other partners, have got the conviction before the court today. We will now pursue McCormack's wealth through the Proceeds of Crime Act and make sure that crime does not pay. Well, he made a lot of money, but he was given credibility, wasn't he, when he was trying to sell these things by our own government? Yeah, and, and in that trial at the Old Bailey, the, the defence said they found that a circle that was difficult to square. Uh, on the one hand, the Crown is prosecuting him for fraud, and yet on the other hand, for a period of four years, the government, various agencies, were indeed supporting him. The Royal Engineers Export Support Team, the Army no less, were helping to demonstrate devices similar to this at trade shows in the UK. And he got money from what was then the DTI, or a branch of it, Department of Trade and Industry, to go on trade missions abroad, as you say questions to answer still. OK, Clinton, but no one would give even 50 pence for this, would they? No. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, thanks for following that story over such a long period.